Hello and welcome to our latest Lewis Brownlee Talking Points video. Today we're going to be talking about making tax digital for self-assessment. So that's going to affect sole traders and partnerships. Um, I'm joined today by Mel Phillips. So Mel's one of our um, fully qualified chartered accountants and she got a promotion recently and she now heads up our Midhurst office. So before we start, congratulations to Mel on a very well-deserved promotion. So Mel, we're talking about Making Tax Digital today. Um, what's it all about? Making Tax Digital is a key part of the government's plans to make it easier for individuals and businesses to get their taxes right and keep on top of their financial affairs. It is a fundamental change to the way the tax system works, transforming the process of tax administration. The tax system will become more effective, more efficient, and easier for taxpayers to get their taxes right. Over recent years, people have begun to do more and more things online. And this has become even more relevant over the last year with the restrictions in place due to COVID-19. Making tax digital involves taking the next step to keeping your business records digitally. It will help taxpayers and businesses get their taxes right and keep their records correct. Making tax digital for income tax is a new way of reporting earnings to HMRC. It will involve using software to keep digital records and send income tax updates instead of filing a self-assessment tax return. Making tax digital will make things much simpler for many businesses. You'll be able to see at a glance from your software what your spending levels are. You can electronically raise, send, and then store your invoices which would simplify the process and avoid the need to do the same work twice. Ultimately, making tax digital will give you more control over your business and your finances. Making tax digital for VAT is already operating, with all businesses now required to file their VAT returns through the Making Tax Digital platform. It is estimated that over 9 million VAT returns have been submitted via Making Tax Digital already. So this sounds like quite a big change. When is this going to happen? The dates of implement implementation are from the 6th of April 2023. So that's any accounting period starting after that date. It will apply to you if your taxable turnover from your self-employed business or income from property is above £10,000. For any new trades commencing after April 2023, you must start recording via Making Tax Digital in year three of that trade. Any new property income must be recorded under Making Tax Digital from 6th of April, following the start date of that property business. From this point, you will be required to keep all business and property records in a compliance software. Any other income can be recorded by any other suitable means for now. You can even choose to voluntarily follow the rules now. Ultimately, it means that it's less than two years from now when the majority of businesses will need to begin to keep their records and report to HMRC in this way. Although that might seem like a long way off, there's a lot to do in that period. There are decisions that need to be made about what software to use. There will be undertaking the transition to using that software. Time to train to use and be comfortable with using that software. And time to ensure you're doing it correctly before the quarterly reporting to HMRC comes live. All of the above are things Lewis Brownlee can be of assistance with. However, we need to start these discussions now to ensure there is time to take all the necessary steps to get ready. Also, we'll not be able to assist all of our clients with this in February and March 2023, so leaving it until the deadline isn't an option. We will be switching for your next accounting period to ensure that any teething problems with the software or with meeting the timings for the filing deadlines are ironed out in advance of the regulations becoming mandatory. This will also enable us to balance our workload across the coming years. And once operational, this system of regular reporting will allow us to offer real-time business insights to our clients. At Lewis Brownlee, we prepared 583 tax returns in January 2021. This is over 40% of those submitted in total. This won't be an option once we're under the Making Tax Digital regime. From April 2023, figs will need to be sent to HMRC every three months. This is the summary of your business income and expenses. Making Tax Digital for Corporation Tax will also be coming in in the future, 
currently expected to take place from 2026. Well, it's quite a lot to do. Um, and it feels like two years is a long time, but I don't think it is. I think it will um, fly by. What are the things in particular that clients need to be thinking about? So there are six main stages to making tax digital. The first one is to keep digital business records. You'll need to keep digital records of all your business income and expenses when it comes from self-employment or property income. The second step is to get compatible software. This means that you'll need to keep your records in an appropriate format using software, and that software then sends the financial data to HMRC. And we'll look further at the software options in more detail in future. The next step is signing up. This will be on the gov.uk website. You can sign up now for your current or next accounting period. In order to sign up, you'll need the following details. Your business name, email address, national insurance number, accounting period, and accounting type, as, as in whether you're cash or standard accounting. You'll also need the government gateway user ID and password that you use when you file your self-assessment return. If you don't already have that, you can create a new login when you sign up. The fourth step is to send your business income and expenses updates on a quarterly basis. This will be summaries of your business income and expenses. You will need to use the software to summarize your regular transactions on a quarterly basis and submit these to HMRC. HMRC would then give you a tax estimate based on the information you have provided. This will allow you to set aside the funds needed to settle your tax liability across the year. There'll be no nasty surprises when the tax falls due. Step five is to finalise your business income. So at the end of your accounting period, you'll need to finalise your business income in a declaration. This involves confirming that the updates you sent throughout the year are correct, and it allows for the opportunity to make any accounting adjustments required to those figures. And finally, stage six is to submit a final declaration, which is instead of a self-assessment tax return. This will be done after the end of the tax year, it will involve telling HMRC about any personal income you have, such as capital gains, or about any reliefs that are available to you. You will then be able to view a tax calculation in your software or by signing into your self-assessment account. You must submit your final declaration and pay any tax owed by 31st of January the following year, so that remains the same as the current deadline. Okay, so we're going to go from one tax return per year to four quarterly returns plus a final declaration. So when is this going to happen? What are the key dates? So you can choose to voluntarily follow the rules now, or you need to start from the first accounting period after 6th of April 2023. So this slide here shows you a, a breakdown of what your accounting year might be, what date it applies from, and then which will be your first quarterly return date and when that is due. So as an example, if your year end is in accordance with the tax year end, 5th of April 2024, then making tax digital applies to you from the 6th of April 2023. That means your first quarterly return is due for the period 6th of April 2023 to the 5th of July 2023. You have until 5th of August 2023 to submit that. So it's only one month after the quarter end to write up all your records get them into the correct format and submit them to HMRC. So it is quite a tight turnaround. Um, if you have a year end of 31st of December, for example, so if it's 31st of December 2024, your accounting period that's subject to making tax digital will start from the 1st of January 2024. The first quarterly return is to the 31st of March 2024, and you have until 30th of April to submit that quarterly return. So again, you only have one month after the quarter end date to submit the return to HMRC. Okay, so more reporting, but also fundamentally for a lot of smaller clients, a very big change to how they keep their records and they're going to need software, I guess, to do that. So many people will be using software already, um, but you need to ensure that if you are, um, that your provider is going to make this software compatible with making tax digital. 
The software is needed so that you can record your income and expenses on an ongoing basis. And so that in, at the end of that quarter period, everything's already recorded. And then you have that one month to, to overview of those figures, check the correct and send them over to HMRC. If you don't already have software, there are a variety of softwares available. There's cloud-based softwares. These are softwares that are normally hosted on the internet and they're usually backed up and updated automatically. Some examples of this would be Xero, Sage Business Cloud, QuickBooks Online, or for us as agents, we would choose Iris. An alternative is a desktop-based package. These are usually installed on a single PC. The individual is therefore responsible for implementing any updates and backups, and you're usually restricted on the, on the number of users that can access the package. The benefit of a cloud-based software is that your agent would, would be able to have a login to that package and we can assist you throughout the quarter and review your figures from a distance. There is an option of bridging software. This is a piece of middleware software that can communicate with HMRC systems for making tax digital. This then allows relevant information to transfer through to HMRC from an Excel spreadsheet, but which complies with the making tax digital requirements. It will still be possible to take your manual records to your accountant or bookkeeper and for them to write these up into a digital format and submit the figures to HMRC. This will satisfy the requirements of making tax digital. So if this is of interest to you, please do get in touch with us here at Lewis Brownlee. HMRC have confirmed that it would be acceptable to group together petty cash receipts and enter them as a single entry into the digital software. It isn't therefore essential that you enter every postage or petrol receipt separately into the software. It's all about using digital links. Emailing a CSV file is an acceptable digital link. Cutting and pasting figures from one software to another isn't a digital link, so it won't be acceptable under the new rules. It is acceptable for your accountant or tax advisor to make amendments to your figures. You can then make, then make these adjustments back into your compatible software and this will suffice as a digital link or record. HMRC are not trying to stop corrections being made by your accountant to the figures, that it's important to them that they receive the correct figures. So this sounds like a very big change, um, but certainly I believe that this is an opportunity and there are benefits to be had. So what's your view? Do you think there are benefits to businesses by introducing this software? It's expected that the implementation of Making Tax Digital will bring about many benefits to the taxpayers and the businesses that use it. Some of these are uh, more timely reporting of your financial data, so there's no administrative burden in January each year. There'll be a greater understanding of your income expenses and tax liabilities, as you're aware of them all throughout the year. It will enable you to plan the cash flow for your tax liabilities, rather than it being a last minute shop and your tax return is prepared. It's estimated that most digitally enabled businesses can save as much as one day per week in administration time by going digital. An example of this are bank feeds, which feed directly into the software from your bank account. So automatically pulling in the income and expenses from your bank account into your software for you. These then only need allocating to the appropriate place even the allocation could be automated by setting up rules within the software and by using the software as meant. Being paperless and digital also has environmental benefits as we're always looking for ways to reduce our carbon footprint and waste. There are also cost savings to be had um, through reduced storage costs for your records or for the secure destruction of confidential waste. Businesses using Making Tax Digital for VAT are reporting wider productivity gains and a reduction in input errors. It's thought to reduce errors and in inaccurate estimations, which occur as a result of keeping inadequate accounting records. And Making Tax Digital will not result in a higher level of tax to be paid, only the way it's recorded and submitted. There are no changes to the dates by which the tax are payable. It's also thought that engaging with making tax digital and keeping records could reduce the need by HMRC to investigate into your affairs. Are there any circumstances where businesses won't need to comply with these rules? 
HMRC expect that most customers will be able to meet the legal obligations of making tax digital, but they do accept that it may not be possible for a small number to do so. An exemption only applies if HMRC are satisfied that one of the two conditions are met. The first condition is it's not reasonably practical for you to use digital tools to keep your business records or submit your returns due to your age, disability, remoteness of location or some other such reason. And if that applies to you, you can apply to HMRC for an exemption. The second reason could be that if your business is run entirely by practicing members of a religious society or order, these beliefs are incompatible with using electronic communications or keeping electronic records. If you believe your business may be exempt from complying with making tax digital for any reason, please do get in touch with someone at Lewis Brownie to discuss this. The vast majority of people will need to comply. If any of the above reasons do apply to you, however, you'd need to apply to HMRC for an exemption, and this will only be granted if HMRC is satisfied that it directly applies to you. So what happens if a business doesn't comply with HMRC? HMRC are undertaking a reform of their penalty system. New VAT penalties will come into effect in April 2022, and this will be a points-based system. They are intended to ensure that penalties are fairer, simpler, and more consistent across all taxes. So the, this new points-based system will be rolled out across self-assessment as well in due course. Where a submission deadline is missed, for example, a point will be scored. When a threshold number of points is reached, it will then lead to a set fee penalty of, say, £200. So what do we need to do? As already mentioned, at Lewis Brownlee, we prepared a significant number of tax returns in January. Leaving compiling your records and preparing your tax return to only one month in advance of the deadline it will no longer be acceptable once we're under this new regime. From April 2023, figures will need to be recorded on a timely basis and sent to HMRC every three months. To ensure the figures you submit to HMRC on a quarterly basis are correct, it will involve prompt submission of these figures to your accountant or tax advisor to allow for time to check over these figures and file them in advance of the deadline. It will involve being much more organised and keeping the records written up all throughout the year rather than leaving it until the period end. There is currently a pilot ongoing with HMRC. You would need software to be able to join it, but the pilot is open to new entrants if this is of interest to anyone. This may be a useful way to gain an understanding of how records need to be maintained and how the reporting requirements will be met. Once in the pilot, however, you are able to change your mind and go back to the previous regime. We would recommend switching over to making tax digital for your next accounting period to ensure that any teething problems with the software or with meeting the timings for the filing deadlines are ironed out in advance of the regulations becoming mandatory. Thank you, Mel. That was a very comprehensive, very detailed and very clear overview of making tax digital. It's clearly a very big change and it's going to affect lots and lots of businesses. Those businesses above the VAT threshold are already doing a lot of this, so, um, so they're in good shape. It's the smaller businesses, I think, that um, will need to um, have a look quite quickly about what they're going to do. So um, thank you so much for your time, Mel. That was superb. Um, if anybody watching would like some more information, then all of our contact details are on the screen now. Uh, contact us via the website, via the social media, and look out for any um, further emails and updates as we go through the next two years with getting everybody compliant for MTD. Thank you.